Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Bad Batch Breakdown. In today's video we're going to be talking about episode 13, Infested. Now to be completely honest with you guys, as much as I do love the series, this episode was really disappointing. As such, this breakdown is going to be a little bit different, because the episode just didn't have as much substance as previous ones. So what I'm going to do is talk about a few easter eggs and then I'm going to give you my honest review of the episode. But before I get into it guys, please may I ask you to hit that big red subscribe button if you've not done so and also be sure to give that bell a good old tickle to be alerted each and every time that I post new videos. So without much further ado and without any more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into it. So our episode starts back on Ord Mantel, where the first thing we note is that Echo mentions a mission the Bad Batch just went on where they had to deal with Gundarks. Gundarks were vicious carnivorous desert mammals from the planet of Vancor. They were renowned for their power and ferocity. Mentioning them in this episode was a nice callback to both the Clone Wars and Rebels, although in recent times Lucasfilm have been incorporating them into the High Republic. So going back to the episode, we quickly learn that Sid's place has been taken over by the Pikes from Obadiah. And and with them in Sid's office is a Deveronian, Roland Durand. He is a former client of Sid's and the son of a crime boss called Issa Durand. Now the name Durand is a callback to the legend's lieutenant by the same name. We saw him in Star Wars The Old Republic. Now seeing the Pikes makes you immediately think of the Shadow Collective. As such, I immediately thought that we might see Maul, but he didn't show up. He might appear later on in the series, but I wouldn't hold my breath. Overall, this episode was loaded with callbacks to Solo, a Star Wars story. Another great example of this is an easter egg that we got early on in the episode. The Weeque and Athorian who appear multiple times in this series were playing the game of Sabacc, something which Lando Calrissian prided himself as a professional at. Sabacc was huge with gamblers across the galaxy and it was a game of both skill and chance. It was a game that could be played with as few as two players just like we saw in this episode or it could have as many as eight players. Players could designate a dealer or take turns as the dealer, rotating in a clock clockwise fashion at the beginning of each hand. The object of the game was to have a final hand with a total as close to 23 or minus 23 as possible. A hand with a total of 24 or higher was considered a bomb out, which basically means you lose the round. Another easter egg in this episode was in Sid's office, where we actually see on the left hand side a 501st clone helmet. Our next little gem was when Tech revealed that the big wasp type creatures were in fact called Erlings. While we've not seen these in canon before, their name is a direct callback to the Troy Denning Legends adventure, Star Wars Jedi's Honor. At the end of the episode, when Roland Durand gets his horn cut off, it looks like they were making a cheeky little reference to Galt Renault from Swotor. Both of these are Deveronians, but one is red and the other one in today's episode is yellow. If you guys noticed any other easter eggs or callbacks, let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, my friends, it's time for us to get to the review of today's episode. I've got quite a lot to say about this one and I'll be starting with all of the positives. Visually, as always, this episode was gorgeous, especially the shots over Ord Mantel. Even the finer details were absolutely perfect and they just show how far we've come graphically since the first season of The Clone Wars. For example, a detail I can think of is the way that Roland sweats and trembles when the pikes threaten him. You can literally see a drop of sweat roll down his forehead. Something else I really loved in this episode was the world building. We got a few background characters from species that we're already familiar with, and seeing them reminds me of the original trilogy, especially the cantina scene. Now, I'm afraid to say, my dear Megalorians, that this is where my compliments for the episode end. On my channel, I always want to be completely transparent with you guys instead of just BSing you. And with that in mind, I want to say that I did not like this episode very much, and my rating is going to have to be a 3 out of 10. I'm not going to use the word filler because it's an overused term whose meaning gets completely diluted. So instead, I'm going to explain exactly why I didn't like today's episode. First of all, and most prominently, we're very far into this season, with only three episodes left. I don't know if the show is going to be renewed for a season two, but I'm disappointed that they're still doing these side missions so far into the series. I'd be fine with them if some of the characters were being developed, but the only thing we got out of this episode was Sid being established as a more firm ally. It pains me to say this, but even Omega was very dislikable in this episode. Her naivety towards stranger danger is hard to watch at times, and while she does have a big heart, 
it could signal some real problems for the Bad Batch if it continues. The rest of the Batch clearly know better than to stop and help everyone in the galaxy, especially if the person they're helping is a crime lord like Roland Durand. I was also pretty bummed out by what the episode title ended up referring to. With a name like Infested, there's so much they could have done, but it ended up literally being a wasp infestation. As some people have pointed out, maybe the last three episodes of the show are going to be the epic ones, and maybe they just needed a random side mission like today to bridge the gap between the Ryloth arc and War Mantle, which is next week. If this is the case, then I guess I'm fine with that, but the show so far has seemed to waste a lot of opportunities and time on pursuits, which kind of feel pointless in retrospect. And I'm sorry if I'm coming across as, you know, a downer or whatever you want to say, but please bear in mind that I'm saying this as someone who really loves the series. I'm heavily invested in this point in the timeline, I'm invested in the characters, and that's why it's so much more annoying when we get disappointing episodes. But I stand by my 3 out of 10 rating, and that is just what it is. But what I will say is that this episode has in no way affected my enthusiasm going forward. I'm still going to watch it and do breakdowns like this every week, but this time I'm going to give it a miss. I really hope that next week's episode is going to pick up the pace a bit, which I feel like is something I say every week, but hey, you've got to keep the faith. I just hope that by the end of this season, everything is going to come together, and I know that's wishful thinking. But if not, then I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for a season two. There is so much potential with these characters, and I do trust in Dave Filoni, and that he probably will flesh out all of this eventually. But I think the worry on a lot of our minds is that we're going to be left disappointed by the end of the series. I really hope that's not the sentiment by the end of the series, and I really hope the next three episodes are going to be mind-blowing. And if not, hopefully we get multiple seasons to compensate. But what did you guys think? My opinion might not be that of everyone, so let me know if you enjoyed the episode or not in the comments down below. Also be sure to comment your rating out of 10, I love reading those. Otherwise guys, if you enjoyed today's breakdown, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're brand new and a huge welcome if you are, and also be sure to check out my Patreon, the link is in the description down below, and you get exclusive access to content that is not found here on YouTube, and that includes my Megasodes, Forgotten Character Series, Planet Series, and more. Otherwise guys, I'm Star Wars Meg wishing you all a phenomenal rest of the day, no matter where you dwell in the galaxy. Have a good one.